excited to be here with all of you. I'm so honored and just want to start with the, some of the last words that Isaac said that to um, bridge to what I'm going to be talking about here, which is remembering who we are, right? That to, to me, that's really that's really the heart of all of this and that we're, we're all talking about it and doing that in different ways. And so what I'm gonna to bring to you today is um, mostly we're gonna go into a practice, which is gonna be a chance for everyone just to experience this directly. But I'm gonna bring forward uh, an ancient teaching tool of self-inquiry from Advaita Vedanta called Drik Drisha Viveka. Um, which is obviously the Sanskrit um, word for this, but it's see or seen differentiation. So I'll share with you just as a beginning here. This is, this is one of the scriptures that um, goes into this teaching in more depth. Um, but basically, this is a very powerful practice that gives us the opportunity to really drop deeply within the field of our experience and and create inner space to really um, look at, you know, who are we as the subject in relationship to the different objects of experience. So we're going to be going into that um, in, a, in a moment, but I want to start with just a little bit of a teaching here um, to put this into context. So, so the question of who are we is a really complicated one because of the nature of the psyche, because of the nature of the construct of the ego, right? So, which we could talk about in many different terms. We could just talk about it as the nature of the mind itself and the ego is a part of that. Um, but one way or another, we are dealing with a situation in terms of our psyche as human beings and particularly the way that we've been conditioned in this, this time and space, right? We're dealing with a condition within ourselves that can be very tricky of how to unlock um, the trap, uh, the trap of the ego, really, the trap of being identified with a certain construct and, and having a lot of unconscious uh, things that are factoring into our experience of ourselves and how we're experiencing the world um, that can be, have a certain power over us, and right? Until we can learn how to deconstruct our inner experience and, and, and just come to um, have more self-knowledge to understand ourselves and, and break it down. So, um, so the beauty of, so, so basically my work is integrating psychology and spiritual awakening um, as a unified paradigm of teaching. And the depth of the work that I've done has been um, in terms of my, my um, own spiritual path, my own spiritual awakening journey, and my own study as a scholar has been deep into the teachings of Advaita Vedanta, which are the teachings on the nature of reality that come from the Indian Vedas, right? The Hindu Vedas, these ancient scriptures. And the Vedas teach about a lot of things, but the last portion of the Vedas is, is called Vedanta, which is end of the Vedas. Veda, Anta, end of the Vedas, is where they teach on the nature of reality, okay? So, so this the, these teachings are very sophisticated and and pretty mind blowing in terms of the the depth of completeness of the teaching you know down to the microcosm to the macrocosm and the psychology that's implicit in these teachings is really sophisticated and amazing and so what I've done in my work is to really um, translate these teachings into a psychological framework. So, so in doing that in a mini way here, the core of the teachings is about how do we get to the heart of who we are, our spiritual nature. And so what we, again, like what I was just saying a moment ago, the, the problem, the challenge is that our, who we are, just the pure conscious being 
is is merged with the rest of ourselves right so like the body mind construct and the self are like merged together you know in like what they call mutual superimposition where there's two realities there's the physical human and there's the spiritual nature but they're merged together so how do we kind of create a wedge in here to separate them out within the field of our experience to really root into the the essential nature so, okay so that's what we're going to do together in this practice and i think that i'm going to leave it here with the teaching and and we're just going to go ahead into the practice and let everyone experience this directly and then we'll have a little time afterwards to um, reflect on it okay so so what we're going to be doing is separating out this is the wedge right this is exactly what we're doing is we're creating a wedge in our in our field of experience to separate out who is the subject the witness and and what is the object okay so we're basically going to start with the physical world outside of our bodies as the object and us as the subject and then we're going to slowly work our way inward and continue with that basic practice of differentiating what is the subject and what is the object okay so um so go ahead and i'm going to ring the bell and just settle in we're going to start with our eyes open but i'll go ahead and start the practice now with the bell so if everyone can just settle in and be completely present for the practice and so as we're here together still with our eyes open we're going to begin to draw your energy into your own physical body while we have the screen here as our portal for connection and just become aware of the fact that you are aware of the field of your experience through your visual field that you are perceiving all the different various forms including the screen in front of you including perhaps you seeing my background and any other objects that you're perceiving all the different various forms just simply noticing what we take for granted all the time which is that you are the witness you're the one that's perceiving the objects and the physical objects that you're perceiving are separate from who you are so that's an obvious reality and so closing your eyes now and just beginning to allow your attention to drop into your body and noticing simply the physical sensations as you relax completely now just allowing yourself to be completely focused on the sensations in your body noticing simply that you are aware of the experience of the body through the sense of touch in the body the sense of perception and then in fact with the eyes closed the only way that the body is being perceived is through the sense of touch And noticing that you are the one that's aware of the body. And that the body is an object of your experience. You are aware of the sensations that are rising and falling. And the, the body is in constant state of flux and change. 
and that you are the one that's aware of the rising and falling sensations in the body. And just relaxing even more, just taking this invitation to completely relax and allow yourself to become aware of the body as one whole unit now. One breathing body. And that you are aware of the body. You are the pure, simple awareness that was aware of the objects in the room a moment ago. And the same awareness that is now aware of the physical body through the sense of touch. And simply noticing that the awareness itself, the light of awareness, is the same, hasn't changed. And bringing your attention now to the sense of your breath flowing. Continuing to relax your mind completely and putting all your attention on the breath. The, noticing that the breath is taking place organically and effortlessly. And that you are simply the one that's aware of the breath rising and falling. that your awareness is equally the same as the breath rises and falls. And then simply noticing that you as the awareness, the conscious being, the consciousness, is stable and continuous while the breath, like the body, is continuing to be moving and changing, that the awareness is consistent and constant. is the light that is shining and illuminating the field of experience. And bringing your attention now equally to the mind. The mind space, the mental body, the field of thinking. And similarly now, bringing your point of attention to the awareness that is lighting up the mind, lighting up the flow of thinking, the thought flow, continuing to completely relax allowing everything to be exactly as it is. And allowing yourself to become aware of the thought flow as if you're sitting on the banks of a river and the thoughts are flowing like the water through your field of awareness. And noticing, as you may, that there's many different types of thinking, different channels. 
And as we continue to relax, in fact, there's more channels that open up more subtle layers of beingness, of experience. But noticing that you are simply the one that's aware now of the thoughts that are flowing through your field of awareness. And letting yourself notice like the breath that the thoughts are flowing effortlessly in a constant state of flux and change and activity and allowing your point of identification to remain as the simple light of awareness. that is the most obvious and simple dimension of your experience. You, the light, the presence, the consciousness, the vast inner space of what you are. And noticing that this simple presence or beingness is in the center, the very center of your experience. It is the center. It's the innermost subjective dimension of your experience in the center. And so just allowing your point of identification to rest now in this very center of beingness, this light of consciousness that you are, that is lighting up all the different dimensions of the field of experience. Equally like the sun, shining and allowing yourself now to just rest in this pure luminous nature of this light of consciousness as simple as can be And noticing as you rest, just for another moment here, what are the qualities, while this experience is boundless in the form of language, but notice if there's any qualities that come to mind, any associations, any images that resonate with this light of beingness this ocean of consciousness and we're going to bring this to a close here in a moment and as you contemplate transitioning with your eyes back open into the multi layers of experience, I want to invite you to stay with the awareness and see how you can stay with the awareness equally as you open your eyes now. Okay. Welcome, 108 participants. <laughs> um, okay, so I am going to open the chat here and um, I, I actually don't know where I'm at on my time either. Okay, so 
So I'm, I'm not sure where I'm at on my time because I know I started a little bit after uh, 11.25. Or is, let me check for you right now. Um, yeah, you have a few more minutes. Okay. Okay, so just, just cut me off when, when it's my time. Um, so let me just see. I, I would love to um, hear from anyone about that journey and what you experience with that and um, any questions that you might have. We have a comment here from Grace. I don't know if you can read that, where she said her body felt hollow, her physical body, I guess, inside of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really common experience. There can be so many different kind of sensations um, in our when we start perceiving the body through sensation, especially if we're not used to that. And so, yeah that that makes sense and i think the more we do that practice of uh, body sensation awareness the more we start to tune into the subtle layers of sensation the more sensation we become more sensitized to our, our sensory self it felt like peace and floating tanya mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how can we bring this into our daily life? So that's a, that's a great question, Nicole. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so that this is our daily life, right? I mean, this 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 teaching is like I to me, it's the most essential piece because the na this nature of who we are is is our nature. It is unchanging. It is it's like the the air that we breathe or you know for the fish it's the water it's like it it is our it is the nature of of who we are and so as we integrate this this teaching you know the the value of what this teaching is is about is affects our daily life in the sense of the more that we can recognize that that this is our nature this illuminated being this this pure conscious pure light being that we the more that we our identity over time you know transforms right transmutes we we shift from more of a like an ego based ego identified human to a, a spiritually identified human this is our spiritual nature and so this is a transformation that takes place over time. And this is, this is really what the course I'm going to be teaching is, is about. Um, this process of, of transformation of the psyche from a more you know, dense, if we look at it in terms of you know, vibration, vibrational frequency, all these things, it's from a lower vibrating self, which is um, paired with the ego-based, you know, unconscious, um, limited, you know, living in a state of limitation and lack and all these things um, to when we identify with our spiritual nature, we start to realize that we are the source of, of love. We are the source of all that we seek really, and that we are infinite creators and all these things. So the more that we can, even if it's just micro moments throughout our day, to shift our point of identification from, you know, the, the, there's nothing wrong with the ego, by the way, <laughs> inherently. Um, it's just a matter of the ego has to be transformed and become rooted more in this essential nature, our spiritual nature. And then the ego is like, okay, like, oh, I'm this, I'm this human being and I'm this, and I'm and with a spiritual nature. And that's where we become really most integrated and whole. So I would just leave it here with, yes, like the, the, there can be micro moments even where we shift from being the active one, being engaged, being the thinker, the doer, to just beingness itself. And the more we can do that, just in really even small ways, and then, you know, bigger ways too, um, it really does transform things over time. So 
so I'll leave it here for now. Thank you so much. And um, I'll turn it back over to you, Neil. Thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. This is Neil, founder of Portal to Ascension, and just closing out this podcast here and letting you know that what you're experiencing are all types of presentations that we have on Portal to Ascension. Uh, such a wide variety, different audio clips from um, conferences that we do, and then other interviews that we have also on our YouTube. And I want to take this moment here at the end and just talk to you about a few upcoming things with Portal to Ascension. We're really excited because 2023, we're really blasting off, and we have um, a few conferences. We have Port of Ascension San Diego, April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. We have Port of Ascension Glastonbury in the UK. Hope to see some of you there. That's August 11th, 12th, and 13th of next year. And then, or 2023, if you're listening to it now. And then we're also taking a tour of people to Egypt, guys. And we're going to go for from September 7th. We're going to have the Hertex with us, JJ and Desiree Hertex, like you might have experienced on our channel. Uh, Joan of Angels is going to be with us, and also Alan Steinfeld. And actually, I have Joan of Angels here with me right now, so I'm going to just hand it over to her and get your input, Joan, on what we're going to be experiencing, your excitement, and all of that. So this is a critical time in our history on the planet, and 2023 is this reawakening of our... It's, it's just our reawakening of our spirituality and our transformation along this ascension timeline. So these events are designed to really awaken you, to really bring you to remember who you are, why you're here, your galactic origins, the power, the personal power we have within us to shift into the planet that we really want mm -hmm. at the most optimum of potential to align our body, mind, and spirit to get there. So these, just to be together in person activates forgotten memories, activates light codes, activates DNA, and most of all, activates your happiness cells because mm. the joy in coming together is just extraordinary. So we invite you to come and be with us in any of these events around the world. And even online, we try to create that same energetics. Mm. So we love you all that we are creating a mystery school that goes around the planet and right. off planet. Exactly, yes. And just a few websites for you. So firstly, of course, the main website, portal2ascension.org, we'll have everything there. You can sign up and get 1,000 plus, well, it's over 3,000 at this point, hours of free conscious content, you know, like a streaming platform where you can browse and all that. And then ascensionconference.com for Portal to Ascension San Diego, ascensionglassenbury.com for the Glastonbury Conference. And then the Egypt tour is going to be on Portal to Ascension or is on portal2ascension.org as well. Um, yeah, so some beautiful, amazing experiences. We're really blasting off. It's time to get exponential. You know, we've been exponential, but now the exponential curve is even going even higher because it's really time for us to remember who we are, tap in our true potential, and make some change on Earth that's better for, creates betterment for everybody, right? And that's why we're doing what we do. That's why this podcast exists. So excited to see you guys there. AscensionConference.com and Portal to Ascension. Joan, any few any closing words? Ascension Glastonbury. Yeah, we're all taking off together. This is this is the time for which we've been called, loves. Can't wait to see you there. Love you all. Mm -hmm.